This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group. Cause I'm a lawyer, I'm the baddest dude you'll ever see. Talk Radio 790 KBC or listen to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show and I'm Carl Gerber. Since this show has got me so much business, I decided to do something I haven't done in a long time. No, it's not what you're thinking. I haven't kissed my wife for going on six months. What I did do is open up the law firm, the Summer Associates, this summer. These aren't associate attorneys or licensed attorneys under the misunderstanding that I'm going <laughs> to do, 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 be some hands-off boss and they'll have to do all the work. And no, sir, I'm the one that does all the work. And sometimes those associate attorneys pitch in too. And, oh, they even print something out they did with a lot of help from me. But... Back to Summer Associates. They're law students who vie for a small, often windowless office at a law firm, usually where they think they'll make bank loads or enough to make one of those payments on their $300,000 student debts and have enough left over for some drunken scooter riding in Santa Monica or an expensive purse. So I interviewed a whole bunch of law students really trying to find one who wasn't into drunken scooter riding or secretly hoped to run an immigrant migrant camp. And I found this here intern, Summer. She's been mostly hanging out in the middle of our secretarial pit-making conversation. <laughs> oh, in the kitchen, too, where she brings in tuna eyeballs, hoping someone will bite. But thus far, it's created a virtually unbreathable atmosphere in the kitchen and made three legal secretaries quit. They didn't quit over the eyeballs. And there's no living proof of that. It's not my fault the human resource lady, they gave notice to die of food poisoning. Summer, I don't feel comfortable discussing these confidential law firm matters on the radio. We could go into the kitchen. There's a reason why I'm doing my legal work over here at the radio station this week. Then we can go over the case of the Guatemalan man who used to live in Vegas. And then the Paris, California in the Riverside area. And he kept calling and telling that he wanted to bring a plastic box with all his toxic clothes and traces of asbestos. And then Anne said no and you said yes. And I said I wasn't sure. And then I read up on asbestos and decided no. And then Anne said yes because it was evidence. And you said yes. And I said I wasn't comfortable. And then he moved to Van Nuys. Well, this is the man that used to live in Vegas and then he moved to... Do we have to go through that all again? <laughs> yes, I want to make sure we're talking about the same person. Okay, I think the guy's from Africa. Uganda. Yes, Uganda. He used to live there and then he moved to Little Rock. Now where the old president, a real president was from, but near Palmdale, he wanted to bring a bag of pay stubs and Walmart bag and you said yes and Anne said yes and I said yes and he never showed up. Let's call him now and find out where those pay stubs are. If I recall it correctly, he was at the company in Glendale, Arizona, and, and then he went to this company in Athens, Georgia, where R.E.M. and the B-52s are from, and then he moved to Arvin because he couldn't afford the rents in Bakersfield, and he wanted to send screenshots to the paralegal of his Fortnite games, and she said no, and you said no, and Anne said no, and we never Never took the case, but 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 lo and behold, a bag of pay stubs from Walmart landed up at our Riverside office, and they were his. You're right. That's who I'm talking about. Funny, I can't remember what the case was about. You know what I'm thinking? We're talking about two different people. We are. The man from Uganda is not the same guy from Guatemala? I'm not sure. Hold on. Let me see something in the computer.
What are you looking at? Did you ever notice there's a guy on the other side of the glass recording us? Do you think he's a proverb? <laughs> no, he's the sound engineer. Sound engineer? We're talking in sign language? We are? Haven't you seen? I've been making all these hand, hand gestures, moving my fingers, shaking my head, shaking my booty, shake, 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 shake it up like shake and bake. Oh, that's what you were doing. I didn't want to say anything on account of that. I represent people with disabilities. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I thought you might be spastic. Mr. Gerber, where have you been? On a cosplay ostrich ranch? Haven't you seen my signs before? I once did something like that. Well, um, just a thing with my finger between my second and fourth digit. Well, I did it when I saw this idiot who lied in court and, and the defendant lost the case because of them. And, and years later... I saw him at the dump, that witness. I've been meaning to ask, what can I do if somebody's lying? Can we get physical with them? No, just let them dig themselves into their own grave. You'll get more lies that way. What about punching them in the gut when they come out of the restroom? Um, what purpose would that serve? I was thinking that it might bring up whatever they couldn't get out. Uh, it sounds more like doing a favor for them. Nah, let them go on and on, and they'll sound like uh, one of the characters on this show. And, uh, wow, whoops it dick we've had some danglers here. If they keep going on and on, what will happen? Well, they'll take their own grave one way or another. For instance, I had a willfully dishonest witness one day in the conference room over at the Sherman Oaks office, and guess what? The judge came in and threw her in jail and told her to take a tinkle in that shiny thing in the cell that doubles as a water fountain and bodily fluid depository. And then the judge threw the key down that wide opening that goes into the pipes that go on for miles and miles and sometimes gets clogged by a simple thing like a sanitary napkin. What if Myron and Alfombro pronounced Madden spelled M&M caused the present administration to act the one sanitary napkin per a menstrual career policy. Us women had to carry around the ever-growing Berber sanitary napkin that is really nylon and washes off wherever we were. Even if we are 30 days in the hole, I mean the big hole, not the sort of big hole in the drinking fountain, a.k.a. bodily fluid depository in jail, and her sanitary napkin per a menstrual career got flushed down the toilet... <laughs> Slash drinking fountain all in one. What would happen? Would this be like China during the 70s? Where a woman could only have one baby and the second baby couldn't be? Would we have to go into early menopause? Would we be shamed into the consequences of not having sanitary napkins for years? Decades? I know. We'd be forced into being breeders, and then we wouldn't need sanitary napkins. There should be a law against this. I do tend to agree. What do you mean you tend to agree? Whose side are you on anyway, the Hatfields or the McCoys? I ain't no southerner! Maybe it should be easy if you took a look at the file. Um, you have the file? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? That would have uh, saved both of us from paragraph-long answers about who the alleged client was, where he lived at various times in his life, and who his wife used to date when she worked at the sock shop on the mall that doesn't exist anymore because everyone under 45 is afraid to leave their house and everyone over 45 is afraid to leave their house because every time they do they realize there has been a home invasion robbery and somebody stole their prescription sunglasses only to realize a few days later the thief returned the shades and left them somewhere weird you had those kind of blurgeries too
Yes, and they steal cell phones and mine because I leave it in the same place. But my wife, I was no, this is the Carl Gerber about... Workplace Lawyers Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. I really am a workplace lawyer, and if you'd like to give me a call off air, you can do that at 877-525-0700 at normal business hours. If you have a real wrongful termination case, that's 877-525-0700. If you're owed wages, work injuries, or sexual harassment, right now we're limited on cases where people have actually been terminated from their jobs or are owed wages. So that's 877-525-0700 for their real workplace lawyer. When we come back, we'll find out what this summer associate's going to tell me next on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Doc Radio 790 KBZ. Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a consistent force in fighting for the rights of California employees. They've represented thousands of employees in cases in which they've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, discriminated against at work, or owed wages individually or as a group such as a class action. The Employment Lawyers Group has maintained a high win rate and a serious record before the California courts. Please call 877-525-0700 for an experienced work lawyer. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, research the firm at worklawyerca.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. If you hire the Employment Lawyers Group, your legal problem becomes theirs to solve. Because I'm a lawyer. I'm the baddest dude you'll ever see. Talk Radio 790 KBC. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show, and I'm Carl Gerber, a real workplace lawyer. We've got a summer associate here in the studio tonight with me. And before we broke, well, I wanted to do some snoring. I, I had to do some snoring, and, and she wanted to tell a story. So I'm going to let her get back to that story. Summer. I was wondering about that. I left my smartphone in the bathtub. I got up to drain the tub. I walked away. I looked out the window and saw the neighbor chick wearing those high heel boots and butt cheek shorts. I gave her a symbol. Not the peace sign. I think she saw me, but then I couldn't track down my cell phone until Monday when I found it in the office underneath a... Uh, a plate of tuna fish eyes I left out over the weekend over in the conference room. Uh, interesting. I was all ready to do a depot down there in the conference room, and then somebody told me everybody from the other side abruptly left and didn't come back. I was I was meeting and conferring all week trying to find out if if if, if they would give me another depot date or I'd have to file a motion to compel. I didn't want to say anything. So you let me waste an entire week writing threatening emails and a few letters faxed and mailed when there was a good cause for the other side to leave the premises abruptly. I got the file. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is the case about a construction worker who made safety complaints. I think these are actually code violation complaints, too, and he got fired. There's an OSHA investigation report, too. Ah, this is right up my alley. You should see what's right up my alley. Well, since you since located your smartphone, maybe you could email me an image. I prefer to bask in the glory of a full-screen picture on my desktop. Those small little iPhone pictures, they don't give me the perspective I'm looking for. Done and done. Um, Summer, you sent me a picture of his dumpsters? Yes. Exhibit 1 is a picture of the dumpster at the end of the alley in back of my mom's house. I don't stay there much anymore. The neighborhood's really gone downhill. Utterly fascinating. Did you get Exhibit 2 yet? Uh, yes, another picture of a dumpster, although a different color. A different city, presumably, now that Los Angeles has created a commercial dumpster monopoly by geographic area, thereby doubling and, 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 and more the average monthly dumpster bill. And what goes in all those blue bins? It doesn't actually get recycled. 
Did you know that? Of course, the city doesn't have its act together on that either. But on another subject, it is true I use a lot of dumpster for construction, but why did you send me pictures of dumpsters? I thought you liked them. Oh, they're lovely. I never realized a touch of graffiti on a commercial dumpster could be so photogenic. Really? No. Mr. Gerber, there's more than meets the eye. Well, I'm sure there could be rotting tuna fish eyeballs in the Exhibit 2 dumpster. Did I ever tell you my boyfriend lives in Gardena? Uh, you said he lived in downtown Los Angeles. That's when I first started. When he got housing now, he's not living, living in the metal shipping container anymore. I'm glad you're with such a rising young man. I make my man rise, uh-huh. Um, what's he doing, Cardinia? Mostly looking out his window over at that dumpster in Exhibit 2. My word! Does he invite you over to his love shack in Gardenia? And as the sun sets, the two of you peer out at the scenery. Chiefly the dumpster in Exhibit 2. <laughs> Maybe when you become a lawyer, you and this rising man can get an apartment with an oven and lots of yeast. I don't mean you'll be all yeast yeast but the bread in the oven can rise and you can make him rise when the two of you get cozy and romantic and look out into the yonder at your own 50 or 75 gallon water heater and maybe even gas meter and think about how much heat and water the whole combo produces now you're talking mr gerber you make me a job offer and i'll be there 75 gallons of water heater and all <laughs> not to change the subject but where does your mom live? That's the address I put on when I fill out my tax papers. Is that the address on your resume? No, it's the L.A. address. And all this time, I thought you were a hipster living on Santa Fe Avenue in the Loft District. N to tell you the truth, I didn't like staying in the metal shipping container. You know how it is. It was raining a lot in the beginning of the year. I never, never got any sleep in that box. I wouldn't imagine with your man rising, or maybe he wasn't on account, there weren't any windows in the container with panoramic views of all the garbage in the streets, the discarded shoes, cannibalized shopping carts, maybe some even with broken weld seams. That was once a metal cooking oven to the outdoor variety where where copious amounts of grease might go in order to saturate hot dogs, onions, various forms of foodborne illnesses, and serve them up in front of the bus about to route to the west side from the Hollywood Bowl parking lot. Yeah, I don't think my boyfriend should have discarded all those shopping carts. Uh, was he serving up street dogs? Hey! Just because he's from the Philippines doesn't mean he eats dogs. I, I wasn't insinuating he did. He used to have a business washing dogs in the carts. After he cleaned out all the grease from when he used to oil cook the dogs in there, the funny thing was, after he washed like a hundred dogs in one of those carts, they were still full of grease and humans harming pathogens. I'm glad your man has settled down with views of a dumpster. Do you know what's in the dumpster in Exhibit 1? Let me take another e look. Exhibit 2? <laughs> well, I'll still look. Maybe I can figure it out. The dumpster in Exhibit 2 is very clean. There isn't any trace of anything that once was or is. I'd have to say it's either all papers or, or something that the dumpers are trying to be very discreet about. Good answer. In raid dumpster one and exhibit one, it's a mess. It looks rather oily on the dumpster, but there's something else. I need to zoom in. Summer! It's blood! Oh my god, skin! This is a crime scene. Your mother shouldn't be, be living in those parts. It's Tarzana! 
God, that place has gone downhill. What would Edgar Rice Burroughs think if he came back to life and, and saw the condition of that dumpster? There's a very unsavory business at the end of the alley. I see. Maybe mob run or something, but the grease thing. Hmm. You know, I, I've seen that somewhere else before. Oh, Dumas, the incompetent employment defense lawyer who was, he was on here on episode 69. Yeah, he, he always has that on those terrible plaid sports coats with elbow pads he wears. Um, do you think, do you think that grease might be neuromassage oil? It is. The lucky seven Tarzana is in that alley. <laughs> Oh, God, Dumas's law school diploma and certificate from the state bar was hanging on that dumpster. Was, was, is the word. What happened? There was some big cat fight out by the dumpster, and it all came crashing down onto the asphalt. That poor incompetent lawyer. He was kicked out of his office in the back as a neuromassage parlor, and now this... It's that what happened? My mom asked why there was some dopey-looking man sitting in an old office chair between the parking bowler and the back door of that massage place. I guess the moral of this story is to every dumpster there is a story. Do you know what my mother told me? Well, maybe, uh, don't play with matches. And <laughs> no, don't date a man who lives in a shipping container and washes dogs in metal containers that were once used to oil saturate, I guess, uh, cook <laughs> at, at unsanitary hot temperatures, hot dogs that are mostly fat content and give desperate people desperate for something gross, everlasting stomach aches and perhaps serious bacterial and viral infections that take them out of the rest of the Hollywood bull season? I'm sort of wishing my mother told me this. It's a good thing you're my boss. I never thought of it that way. Before we get on with the construction worker wrongful termination case, uh, you still haven't given me the uh, OSHA report. Let's uh, play. Let's play what's in dumpster number two. <laughs> oh, gee, this is going to be fun. How many guesses should I give you? I want to be fair, but you're pretty old. I mean, smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm a lot younger than your mother. <laughs> what are you, 25 or 6? Your mother must be on the other side of 50. Not my mother. She's 36. Well, she will be in November. How old are you again? 27, 3 months, 5 weeks, 39 days. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. How far are you from 50? God, a long, long way. Many moons from now. Uh, two months and one week. I never realized it. You're 20 years younger than my boyfriend. He's pushing 70? No, he's pushing shopping carts that used to be hot dog cook carts. But at least he'll be in Gardenia for his 70th, hopefully enjoying the breathtaking views from his apartment window that look onto a cleanly looking dumpster. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm Carl Gerber, and I'm a real workplace lawyer. Yes, I am. And so give me a call sometime about a real case, 877-525-0700. When we come back, who knows what will be told next by this summer associate on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. Just another intern with a resume. I'm gonna find Since 1993, the Employment Lawyers Group has been a results-oriented law firm whose goal is to get the client what they deserve. They've represented thousands of California employees who've lost their jobs, been sexually harassed, subjected to employment discrimination, or were owed wages on an individualized or group basis, such as a class action. They have a high rate of success. There are few situations involving employment law that they have not confronted. At the forefront of employee rights, they're often the first employee law firm to confront a new legal issue. For an experienced employment lawyer, call 877-525-0700. That's 877-525-0700. They have call takers standing by. Online, read more about the firm at EmployeeLawCA.com. They have offices throughout Southern California. Make your work problem theirs to solve. 
I'm a lawyer. I'm the baddest dude you'll ever see. Talk Radio 790 KBC. You're listening to the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. And I'm Carl Gerber. And we've got Summer, the summer associate in here tonight. One night about 3 a.m., my boyfriend and I went to the hamster on, on, on one of those bodily leashes. He ran over to the dumpster, and my boyfriend was sort of gnawing on me. And he wanted to spit some of out. And he opened, opened the dumpster. And do you know what he saw there? More of your body parts that he gnawed off? He doesn't eat me. Well, he does, but not like that, Mr. Gerber. Then I have absolutely no idea what you two lovebirds saw in that dumpster at 3 a.m. when you were out for a hamster body leash walk and a little non on the old girlfriend with a mother eight years and some months older than her. Yeah, that's weird that my mother's a little more than eight years older than me. She's really my mother, too. I'm not adopted or anything. Oh, Yankees, the dumpster. It was all this tangled up nylon. Your boyfriend lives in Gardenia? That's what I said. Doesn't he really live there? I guess. How far from Crenshaw Boulevard is this? His apartment's on top of the muffler shop on Crenshaw Boulevard. How did you know? Did these large quantities of nylon resemble Berber? That's weird. I never thought about it. Sort of. More like lo mein noodles. Oh, this is the biggest coincidence ever. Out of all the places your mom could live, her house backs up to the alley that leads into Reseda, and she can actually look out into the alley where Nazuki's Lucky 7 Neuromassage Clinic performs many illegal acts, attracts many unsavory types, including those who dump body parts into the dumpster there, watermelons too <laughs> and, and your boyfriend he lives in close proximity to a fa chinese restaurant you've eaten there i hear it's a lot more dangerous health wise that is than eating from one of those hot dog carts as the not that wise father Rishi Yodinsky said in episode 62 when he lured me in the cruising for labor law violations on Crenshaw Boulevard those phony lo mein noodles can lead to a ruptured gastrointestinal perforation, also known as ruptured bowel and maybe even death. That's what it is. My boyfriend's landlord ended up there in the hospital after eating there. She was a big organizer for Bernie. They had to move the Bernie rally from Gardena to Long Beach this week. My dear summer associate, the evil Myron Alfumbra, pronounced matting but spelled M and M, is behind the ever-growing lo mein noodles at Fa Chinese restaurant that are actually nylon with the goal of being ingested by the mostly liberal customers of that establishment and causing grave bodily harm. I'm going to tell my boyfriend to move. I'm not going over there again. I don't care if he's living in a cardboard box outside a migrant detention camp. That would be better than being next to that ever-growing nylon place. You go, girl! Ah, uh, could I have a raise? Um, what exactly have you accomplished? Let me show you. It's all in this OSHA whistleblower file. Um, yeah, this looks like a decent case. He complained internally about an unsafe trench with forced to work in and, and then the, the manner in which the building was being waterproofed. Read this. Building covered with most unusual waterproofing. Haven't seen this method before. 25 years with department as building inspector. Uh, Summer, do you have more information about this waterproofing system? Not too much. Our Uyghurs got fired before they dug out in front of the place. What do you mean? 
Rodriguez got suspicious. He stuck around the weekend and used the excavator that was on site and dug around the building. Uh, this is a little weird. A completely unauthorized use of company property <laughs> might not bode well. But then again, if he was fired for complaining to OSHA, they have to prove by clear and convincing evidence he was fired for a reason other than his complaint to OSHA. Does it make a difference that he dug this out after he got fired? It's a good thing he did the excavation. It might have saved lives. Um, how far does this go down? How far did he go? These questions I don't know the answer to. Um, there's a soils report. Uh, there's a field observation. Let me see that. It was too much gibberish. I didn't get it. Okay, this says the soils engineer saw a French drain 18 feet down. I guess Rodriguez went pretty far. He's an adult. He can do that. Was he supposed to go that far? Did he have consent? Consent from who? Like his mother? I was thinking his employer. Wow. I didn't know employees got involved in giving consent to things like that. Are you like that? Like excavating down 18 feet? I think he did it over the weekend. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he created an 18-foot trench. He created an OSHA violation. He said it rained and all the dirt washed away. Well, that would be an incredible amount of dirt in order to get that excavator in there. He must have... He must have had eight feet of width. This, this mixed-use property he was working on in the middle of a canyon... It's 70 feet long, that direction. 8 times 18 divided by 70 is... 10,080. 10,080 divided by 27 is... 373... 3, 4. Um, 373.34 cubic yards of soil moving downhill would create quite a problem for the downhill neighbors. It was just one old lady. She had a very, very, very fine house in the canyon. Two cats in the yard and a flower vase. Kind of weird. Nothing else in there. I forgot. A fireplace, too. What happened to the house? They tore it down and built a parking lot. Somehow I feel like I've heard this before. They tore down a lot of things and built parking lots. Right. After her house got washed away, they had to do something with the land, and they built a parking lot. It got two or three spaces. They're going to rent them out for people who come to the mix and use and watch the fire. They're going to have on the roof. I think Rodriguez did himself a service by being fired from this particular project. Get Rodriguez on the phone. Now that I have all of this, I've got a couple of questions. I was supposed to say that. If he got any pictures of the waterproofing material. When am I supposed to ask him? Yeah, that is weird thing on there. In the picture, in my 21 years of hillside construction, I've never seen waterproofing like that. He's sending the pictures now. You'll be able to see the waterproofing material he used, Mr. Gerber. I'm feeling all turned around. Oh. What happened? I feel like I prevented entry. Entry into what? It was like two outspoken Americans were trying to get in somewhere, and all I got all turned around. Okay, this is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show. I'm getting a little turned around trying to follow this case with some guy who excavates 18 feet of dirt. On the weekend, it sounds like he created a shoring problem, and then all the dirt goes down to some very, very fine house with a flower vase and a fire in it. And I thought I'd heard that somewhere before, and then they tore down the house and they built a parking lot. Uh, enough of this Woodstock crap, and those people, at least that Joni woman, wasn't even at Woodstock because she had a high-profile appearance on the Dick Calvert show and I was supposed to be there even though I was uh, not even born yet. Okay, um, <laughs> on a serious note, 
I'm a real workplace lawyer. Um, yeah, right. I really am. I'm licensed in four states. And if you want to call me about a wrongful termination case, I would like to hear from you. If you called OSHA and got fired, 877-525-0700. If you called OSHA and got fired, there's a rebuttable presumption that you were fired for whistleblowing that the employer actually has the burden of rebutting with clear and convincing evidence. So I'm at 877-525-0700 during normal business hours. And again, I can be reached at 877-525-0700 for a real wrongful termination case. When we come back, I don't know what's going to happen, but I think something a little bit unusual is going to happen on the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. It's just another intern with a resume. I'm, I'm a lawyer. I'm the baddest dude you'll ever see. Talk Radio 790 KBC. This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show, and I am Carl Gerber, real workplace lawyer. I'm just hanging out, kicking back with my summer associate summer on this Sunday night because she smelled up the whole office with tuna ball eyes. Oh, oh. Uh, I just like to relax these Sundays. <coughs> Oh, no, he's back. That man with the terrible three plugs of golden hair, Myron Alfumbra, pronounced matting, but spelled m and m trims, probably with a tam pume. I'll fight him. I'll fight him, Mr. Gerber. I've barely recovered from my visit to the Lucky Seven in Tarzana. One of those foreign migrants that took a welfare benefit when her daughter was starving before she got the good sense to use her uh, assets and work the new room massage trade. That terrible poor foreign woman who lives in the back of the clinic got me infected. <laughs> that gave me the opportunity to lay in my bed with rubber sheets and text my dear friend in Israel. He would be weak if he let those two awful women, women into Israel who aren't a mainstream religion. You're going to pay. You're going to pay for wrecking the studio. I can assure you I have a much better studio in my towers. Is that the tower that's about to be on a street renamed President Barack H. Obama Boulevard? That won't happen. And those two women won't have a good time in Israel. Oh, can you just go back to wherever you came from? I'm a miracle worker. Like that broad that taught that other broad how to speak or read or play the skin flute. That mute broad literally couldn't say no. That's one of my favorite qualities in a woman. There's one thing I can't stand, and it's sexist jokes like that. This country was an absolute disgrace before me. Barely better than Mexico. The only reason that I even lived here was because my wife's magnificent jugs were here. But I'm going to continue to improve this country. We're going to start with the remodeling of the Statue of Liberty. She's super, super flat-chested. Like the lady athletes that I have to constantly meet. Nobody wants to see that. I'm a firm believer that boobs get in the way of athletic success and that not having boobs gets in the way of me finding someone interesting. We can remodel her after my lovely daughter Ivanka. She won't be as uncomfortable with me staring at her things when they're on the statue. I'm sick of all you male fantastic pigs. Yeah, so am I. Why can't you just be a bunch of mediocre pigs? How do we get rid of him? Hey, there's a Wendy's down the street. Mr. Gerber, the hamburgers there aren't half bad. Maybe they'll give him the bad half. I heard this is a conservative duck radio station. Why are you here? Uh, sir, do you have any words on the one ever-growing Berber sanitary napkin policy per menstrual career? It's a wonderful thing for the not-so-wonderful women. The wonderful women, those with waists under 29, cup sizes C and beyond, weights under prescribed limits, will be entitled to a 25% reduction on the policy for each sex-based characteristic they score highly on, up to 300000 per year. So are you saying a 36, 24, 38, 5 foot 9, 118 pounder 
would still be subject to that awful policy. I'd pardon any woman capable of being in a beauty pageant worthy of me judging. This is extreme sex discrimination. It's turning a certain kind of women into breeders. I sort of like this idea. Oh, Summer, you'd be comfortable carrying around the same ever-growing sanitary napkin for the rest of your menstrual career? It sure beats being turned into a breeder. Oh, this is frightful. Sir, what are your thoughts on Chinese food? We're winning. We're winning. Um, she's referring to Chinese food made in America. When I used to be a Democrat in New York, before the trade war, before the rise of white nationals, I had a particular enjoyment for Chinese noodles. Because, say, a wonton in soup has the same mushy qualities as something else. Wonton noodles. How is any great American to eat one and not immediately grab a woman's breast without their consent? Hey, I can get you hooked up with... Bomb Chinese food by, you know, my boyfriend's house. Oh, yeah. They've got really plush wontons there, but but the house specialty is lo mein. I never much liked lo mein on account of it not reminding me of a woman's... Oh, please. This is commercial radio. One big infomercial for my organization. You could You should consider an election. Uh, look, Summer, we'll have a bunch of stuff made up for you. You won't have to go in. Hey, we won't even tell them it's for you. I don't know what their Chinese cooks would do if they found out it's you. They're immigrants. I could be eating wontons and grabbing breasts again. Yes, but you have to at least try their lo mein. We'll tell them to double it up and, and, and make it feel like women's hair. I'm a serial predator. I don't concern myself with women's hair unless I or one of my associates say that Epstein man is finishing up over there. If you want the wontons, you gotta try some of the lo mein. My boyfriend will be there to help. I hope your young man, if he's an immigrant, isn't from Mexico. Actually, her young man is 70. I like him already. Maybe he can give you some tips on trading in that wife of yours who wears strange outfits to foreign countries. Well, at least trading her for a newer model, one almost 50 years younger than you. <sighs> Take a look at the picture from the excavation case while I FaceTime my boyfriend. <sighs> We've gone from political treason to wrongful termination just like that. Did you get the pictures? Um, what's this picture of you being all flirtatious with the man in the walker? Oh, sorry. That's my old boyfriend. He looks close to a hundred. I hope you have the right picture now. My word! The subterranean waterproofing on that building is... Is nothing I've ever seen before. Uh, what is that substance? <laughs> no, it can't be. Excuse me, I, I have to consult with Remus Helms. You got his phone number? Can my boyfriend meet him? He's a huge fan. Why would a guy be a fan of Remus Helms? Weird. Um, wait, Remus Helms is on the phone. Yes, yeah, Remus. I just sent you a picture of the strangest waterproofing I've ever seen. Why would Remus Helms know anything about waterproofing? You're supposed to be the contractor. Yes, you have the picture? Can, can you verify it's what I think it is? Okay. You're saying that waterproofing material is the world's largest condom? I haven't measured, but... The building is supposed to be 70 feet in that direction. How high is the subterranean excavation? Well, it's 17 feet. Yeah, the area is uh, 1,190 square feet. Oh, yes, it's wrapped all around the building, too. What's he saying? You know, standard condoms have a width of 1.75 to 2 inches. The biggest one is 9.4 inches long. <gasps> uh, Remus, don't mind me asking, but... What do you do about condoms? And you, you want to know who makes this condom? 
Mr. Gerber. They said the waterproofing material was made out of recycled products. Oh, Summer, since you're so good with math, tell me how many condoms it would take to be 1,190 square feet. Assuming a large width with two inches and a large length of seven inches, not very big. Remus Helms got twice that. It's 28 square inches of material per a non-Remus Helms size condom. 144 square inches of a foot. We're talking roughly 5.15 condoms per square foot. 5.15 times 1,190. Actually, that's not that many recycled condoms. 6,128.5 to be exact. You go through, you go, Remus, you go through that many cons uh, over a, at the ranch in a month? I'm disappointed. You, you, you're saying you lose, you use less than 10% of those 6,128 cons in a month. Mr. Gerber, do you think the waterproofing is illegal? Summer, you've got your research cut out for you. See if Remus Helms can help you determine exactly where those recycled materials came from, how strong they are, and if there are any biological products of an unsanitary nature still in them. And that's where we're going to leave things? Unfortunately, I think it is. <laughs> This is the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show, heard every Sunday from 7 to 8 on this station. But if you want to talk to me during normal business hours about a real wrongful termination case, I can be reached at 877-525-0700. That's 877-525-0700 if you have a horrible employer who didn't pay you. 877-525-0700 for a real sex discrimination lawyer. Yeah, that's me, Carl Gerber, licensed in four states, 15 offices in California. All right, this has been the Carl Gerber Workplace Lawyer Show on Talk Radio 790 KBC. And this week coming up, I hope you all have a wonderful week of workplace abuse. And if you do, I think you know where to call. Let's hear it from Matt, the comedian, who came on impersonating you-know-who. This show furnished by Carl Gerber and Employment Lawyers Group.